Good morning everyone. I hope you can see me. I hope we are now live. If we are, please do let me know. Give me a thumbs up or a love heart or say good morning in the comments. It's always lovely to talk to you. I'm just going to refresh my screen and see if I am live on here. Fingers crossed. Give me everything crossed. Sometimes you can do everything that you need to do and um, Facebook doesn't cooperate. So yeah, fingers crossed we are live. Can't see any comments coming through yet, but there is a bit of a delay. So I shall stay here for a little minute just to let people hop on and find me. Let me see. Come on, Facebook. How are you all today? I hope you are well. It's a rainy day here in Bristol again. So, um, but we might have some snow tomorrow, which is quite exciting. Seems to be a Sunday thing now, which is quite nice. I'm just gonna keep refreshing. I think people are starting to comment, but I can't see what's going on on the screen, which is a little bit annoying. Um, let me just keep refreshing. And hopefully I will pop up. Where am I? Let me see. Here we go. It's getting there. More and more people are popping on now. You can find me. Well, you can find me. I can't find myself, which is annoying. But yes, I hope you are all well. Um, it's been really lovely to see all of your posts in Artist Community this week. Uh, some of you have just been going for it and, um, you know, giving it a really fantastic go. Some of the artwork is unbelievable. I just can't believe it. Um, but what I would say, good evening from Australia. Fantastic, how exciting. Good morning, Melissa from Australia. Good morning, Caroline. Good morning, Julie. You're so excited, can you tell? Um, I wish I could kind of, it's hard to kind of gauge people from comments. So um, I'm so glad you're excited. Julie, that's fantastic. Uh, let me just scroll down and see if there's anybody I haven't said hello to. Good morning. Make sure you do say good morning. It's always lovely to be able to talk to people. Just grabbing something to eat, <laughs> Catherine. Good morning. Good morning, Lorna. Good morning. Morning, Paul. Morning, Tracy. I hope you're all, all well. Um, I've been having a few comments about, um, because I suppose I uploaded the, the fact that I'm going to be doing the fur uh, demonstration today, and people kind of sounding like they're, they're panicking a little bit. Um, and I, I think what I would say is just, just be kind to yourself. We all learn at our own speed. Um, and it all depends what else is going on as well. There's so much going on at the moment. Some people have got children at home, myself included, we're having to fit in homeschooling at the same time as doing what you'd normally be doing. Somehow you've got to find an extra six hours a day uh, to put into schoolwork, which you didn't have to do before. Or some people are finding that they're working from home and they haven't got all of the things that they need and it's frustrating. And, you know, there's an awful lot going on. And apart from all that, we all are so different. Don't put pressure on yourself to to get it right first time, whatever right is. I think, um, you know, I'm here to, to give you some tips and techniques and hopefully answer the questions that you've been finding difficult. But there's certainly no rush at all. And if COVID has taught us anything is that we are not in control. I think we're going to be in for a little bit longer yet. Um, we're not going very far. Um, so we've got we've got time. We've, we've got time to, to learn. Um, and somebody did say to me the other day, what would be your or, or what was their top tip for getting through this kind of lockdown situation? And a lot of it is people learning something new or investing in themselves and 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 really going for it with a, a certain hobby that they possibly haven't picked up for years. So I think keeping your brain active on something positive, something creative is fantastic, especially if there's a really lovely community as well. Um, I just find that, you know, it's worth its weight in gold. Good morning, Julia. Good morning, Geetha. Good morning. Set my alarm. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. What excited my family thinks I've gone crazy. I think my family do too. Children are upstairs again with the husband, bless him. Good morning, Marie. Good morning, Christine. 
Um, it's really a shame that they just whiz off uh, really quickly. Um, good morning, Susan. I can see that you're watching. I don't know if you've commented, but do say good morning if you haven't already. If you're catching me on the replay, I know for a lot of people it's three o'clock in the morning right now. So please do still say hi if you are watching on the replay. Um, it's always lovely to see you. Uh, found you, few. I know I couldn't find myself this morning, so it's always a little bit of a minefield. Um, does anybody have any questions before we get started? Um, things that you might want me to cover when we get started with the the eye to begin with and then the fur. Um, I've kind of tried to keep a note of some of the questions that have been going around um, and a lot of it was just to do with layering. People were getting a little bit overwhelmed by what seemed like so many steps to do and I did try and pack a lot of information into those three days and there's so much more to say. I mean, it's been a lifetime, like 40 years, I've been drawing since I was born, but it's been a lifetime of drawing um, and painting and then the coloured pencil work more recently and more seriously. I don't think there's been a day or many days that I haven't picked up a coloured pencil in the last four or five years. So um, it's, you know, it's an awful lot to cram into just three days and there's still a lot more to, to to know about it so don't don't panic about trying to get everything straight away because these do, these things do take time and a lot of it is practice and i think the best way to just to learn is to have a go and then ask questions as you go because sometimes the questions don't pop up until you've started and then you get to a bit of a point where you're stuck uh, and that's when you want to reach out and ask a question which i can see some of you've been in been doing in the group and there's so many amazing people in the group now that can can help um, really quickly it's just a fantastic community pink white I couldn't find in my sets uh, the luminance has the pink white I don't know if you've got luminance pencils um, no skiving needed today exactly uh, can I ask if you could scribble the color of your pencil on a bit of separate paper as you use it um, I'm using castle pencils so that bit of, ah right okay um, you might have to remind me because I get a little bit carried away. Uh, so I try and watch the comments as I'm drawing. Um, but luckily, in a lot of the pencils, they are uh, similar names. You've got the umbers and you've got the siennas. Um, and then you've got some that are the ochres that are very, very similar to each other. And sometimes I just pick up a pencil because it's close to hand, not because it's the perfect colour, just because I think, well, that'll do. And we'll see. It's a little bit of an experiment as well. And I think, you know, I, I'm quite familiar with the polys, but not as much with the luminance or the pablos that I have. And also the um, watercolour, the super soft that I've got. Um... Uh, I've only got the polychromo pencils. Yes, I'm mainly using polys today just because there's been a little bit of a theme with the colour chart that I um, that I showed you. Uh, the fact that they are so versatile and I think if you haven't bought any pencils yet and are thinking about which ones to buy, you cannot go wrong with polychromos. And as I said before, the coloured pencil shop sell them open stock so you don't have to buy the whole set of even 36, which has some pencils that you're not going to use um, you can buy all of the, the kind of um, whichever colours that you're going to be working on, whatever your piece is. So if you're using the bright colours, uh, they've got hundreds of them, not hundreds, there's 120 in the whole set. But there's there's lots of different colours in the polys and also there's some lovely earthy tones and natural colours for the fur. So I started with polys and I think I had the polychromos for oh, three years before I even invested. I think I had a luminance white. Um, which was so much better than the, the polychromos white, but I didn't buy any more for ages and ages. So you can happily use the polychromos or something similar for a long time. You don't have to invest in hundreds of pencils. Any other small set of polys, that's all I had to begin with and some sketch paper, but still want to try and follow different paper to eek. Actually, I've done a little, I don't know if this is gonna make me fall flat on my face, but what I've done is um, I'm using the Fabriano and that's only because uh, it, it is the best paper I've found and I, I did want to, I think sometimes if you find a good paper that you love and another paper that you would try would kind of fight what you're doing, then why not use the paper that you love? Um, but what I've done is I did this one on this side, which is my preferred side of the Fabriano, and then I've drawn out the demonstration today on the other side, which is very different to the front. 
Um, so this is going to be a challenge for me too. And so in some ways it's going to be, I don't think I've, I've drawn on it once and I didn't like it. So I am putting myself out of my comfort zone and trying something different. So you might relate to this when you're trying with your paper and we might come across some problems together, which will be quite nice. Um, although I don't know if that's too much pressure for myself whilst I'm live with an audience um, being watched. Will I be able to watch this again on catch up? Yes, I'm going to put it in the announcements of the group so that you can watch it. I prefer to just watch and learn a follow up later. So definitely, I think that's a good idea. Um, you can draw along with me and some of you were. I was really amazed in the workshops this week when I was doing it, you know, really fast scribbling on a piece of paper. And some people were doing things as I was drawing, which is unbelievable. We are, you know, we've got sprinters, joggers and walkers in this world and you've just got to go with whatever you are. Um, it's separate, I think, not in a set. What's that? Pink white? I've forgotten who said about the pink white. Um, it's not in a set. It's not in a set. It might be one of the new ones. It might be one of the new luminance colours. Um, how many were there? I think there were 76 in a set and I actually invested <clears throat> in the whole set um, for an early birthday present for myself one year. Uh, so I think there was 70 set in the luminance range. And then recently, I'd say in the last year or so, they bought out 28 new colours. 24 of them are in the portrait set that the colour pencil shop do. But so four of them aren't in it and it might be one of those. So, um, yes, you can buy them open stock. And the pink white is really great for skin tones. It's great for blending. It's just it just has that kind of warmer tone to it than the, the white, which I think I said it kind of knocks everything out. So if you want a really bright highlight, then use the white. But if you want something that's got a bit of a warmer tone, then use something like an ochre or the pink white. Um, it's in the set. Brilliant. There you go. It's in the set. Just found it. It's in the portrait set. Brilliant. Um, it took some funding. Finding. <laughs> predictive text again it's all in one word pink white is it oh gosh and also i don't know about you but i found the luminance really difficult to read um, my eyes aren't the best i've only got one that works so um i'm not very good at close work which isn't great for drawing um so i have to wear my glasses for that and they're really difficult to read um the polys are difficult if they reflect in the light i think they're written in gold um Right, so any more questions about fur that I can read before I start drawing? Otherwise, I'm going to lose myself. What's the difference between blending pencil and blending stumps? Which is the best to use? Good question. Um, let me see if I can find. Right, OK. You can use and you can buy, which I mainly use for graphite, these tortillions or blending stumps. Um, they're paper, which is great because it's better for the environment. Um, you can actually make your own, but good luck with that because you need to roll them. So it's basically rolled paper um, and you can get them in different widths and they're really good for graphite. And I have used them a little bit for coloured pencils. So that's pretty good. Um, blending pencil, blending stump. Um, this is a blending colourless pencil blender from the Luminance range. And you can buy these open stock too. They come in sets of two. And this is um, a very, it must be the same, it just feels different because the whole thing, it's not cased in anything, the whole thing is a, is a blender. Um, it must be the same consistency or a little bit harder than the uh, Luminance wax pencils. But what you do is you use it to smooth the graininess and it works really well because what you're not doing is adding any pigment over the top, like a white, which would knock out the colour. It just takes away the graininess, great for skin, uh, great for eyes, um, things that you want that glassy look. And also if you're finding that your fur is still looking grainy after quite a few layers, then this would be a good option to use. So I, I do use that sometimes, I found it, it's actually snapped in half. You do have to sharpen it like you would a pencil, which is great. Um, but what I tend to use is if I'm using my... Um, if I've laid down my base layer of colour, so I've looked at my reference photo, I've got my colour charts um, and possibly put it up next to the reference photo. You can't see my computer, but holding it up next to it 
just to see which colour matches it the best. What I tend to go for is the ivory, the cream, um, the light yellow ochre. What else do I use? Um, I do use a few luminance for the, the lighter ones because they are pretty good. But if you don't have luminance, then the ivory or the cream. Um, ivory is a little bit more um, neutral. The cream is a bit yellowy. And if you're, it's fine if you've got like a browny fur, but if you've got a cold looking fur, like a black with a bluey undertone, then you don't want to use a warm necessarily. What I'd use for that is the cold grey one. Cold grey one is another fantastic pencil. Got to have that in your set. Along with the, if you can, if you can afford to buy all of the greys, six warm greys, six cold greys, the se the Payne's grey, and then the dark sepia, which is more of a dark brown, then I would definitely recommend them. But you can, yeah, blend with the greys if you've got uh, the cold grey, if you've got a colder tone, and a warm grey if you've got a warmer tone. Or you can use a combination of both of those. Um, is it number? Five eight one. I don't know if I've even got it to hand here, have I? Yes, five eight one in the luminance. They've actually written it in white, and yes, it is all one word, and it's tiny, like elongated writing, which is really difficult. Can you see? No, you can't. The light knocks it out, but it's got a little bit of a a, a pinky ready undertone, which is fantastic. Um, yes, it's in the book. So, does that answer your question, Kate? I hope so. Um, some people were asking whether you need to use all of the colours over and over and over again. So uh, put one layer down and then blend and then put all of your other and then go back again if you need to add. And um, no is the answer, I think, for that one. What you're trying to do is build up the colours so that you don't so that you're getting a rich um, depth of colour without then having to go through all of the stages again. Um, what, what I do with the blending in between is to soften the spur strokes and to help to get rid of the graininess of the paper. You don't have to do that at all. You can just use the layers to blend as well, which I, I do sometimes as well. I think it just depends on what you're drawing um, as to, to what method you use. And, and having just a few different techniques is going to help um, you to kind of pick which one is the best. So I think what we might do is get started. Um, I'm going to move my computer. I'm going to grab my glasses. I'm going to bring you over here and turn you around. Take you off. Right. Put you on my stand. I've got all my pencils laid out. Don't worry, I will be moving this in a second. So I want to show you just kind of how I've laid my pencils out. Don't panic at the amount of pencils I've got, everybody. Um, I've just kind of laid them out in colour order because it's just easier to pick up. Um, and I just wanted to be a bit mindful of not making a massive noise clanking around with my pencils that people would, it would hurt their ears on the phone because it was things magnified. So I'm just moving my computer so that I can see. Um, how many of you have printed off the line art and are drawing straight onto the line art? And how many of you are um, watching and how many of you are freehanding um, and kind of trying to do that right now? Let me know, because if you've not sketched it out yet, it might be worth um, watching now so you can watch the demonstration and then coming back to it a little bit later on. So I'm going to lose the comments on the computer and go into my reference photo. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on the eye. Um, and then we'll see where we go. So I've got my kneadable eraser here and I'm going to dab because I drew this really hard. I pressed quite hard on the pencil because I wanted to be able to take a photo of it so that people have got it. Um, so you can use the kneadable eraser just to go over the top and rub out some of the graphite because we don't really want that showing through it's a fairly light cat and you will see all of these pencil marks through I'm not going to be able to get rid of it because I've actually embossed the paper slightly pressing a bit hard so you can see that takes away the grain as quite a lot and you can dab it as well please don't use blue tack um, blue tack's quite different actually I've got some holding up my 
board. So there's blue tack and there's the kneadable eraser. You can see it's darker, it's so much softer and it's not oily at all. Um, so don't be tempted to use blue tack or white tack. It's kind of the same. Um, it will leave an oily residue on your work and you really don't want that. Right, so what I do first of all with any drawing really is I would get my dark sepia in my polys and I would do an outline of the darkest part of the eye that you can see. I'm going to get some... Have I got any paper that I can put over so I don't smudge? Don't worry, it's not anything nice. It's I don't want to smudge the rest of my drawing. Um, I'm going to do an outline around the eye, the darkest part. So I'm just going to map out on my line art. I've noticed I've missed out the little tear duct in here. So that's something that you just want to leave out. Make it bigger than you think it's going to be. And then you can always um, change it later on. So I'm just using a light hand and I'm just mapping out that darkest part. This is where the shadows are going to be. And it's very, very dark along the top. There are some hairs that actually overlap into the eye, but you can do that with the slice tool a little bit later on. You can do that after. So we're not going to worry too much about that for today um, because I think the more confident you get, the more you can start seeing detail and also adding detail. This part of the eye is really dark, so I feel quite confident in going in and just mapping that in a little bit oh gosh this, this texture is very different um, so it's really quite grainy so that's quite a good thing that I can show you how I'm going to try and overcome that if I can <laughs> never be complacent it always makes you fall flat on your face um, so I'm just going around that little bump I've made it way too big but that's okay we can play with that a little bit later on um, so I'm just mapping in that darkest part and I'm using kind of oval shapes, those small circles we talked about, light hand and just going over it a couple of times, just adding a layer down. And what I'm doing is just working out where everything is. This is um, a good way to just map out the parts that you need to leave free for the highlights and the parts that you can go in pretty dark. So I'm just adding a little bit of that. It's a very, very thin line at the bottom compared to the shadow at the top. So I'm not going to put too much more at the bottom. And then I'm going to add quite a bit at the top. We talked about with the eyes, didn't we, that to try and make them look 3D, we need to get the shadows in around the edges and definitely under that um, eyelid at the top because that's going to then make this part look like it's standing forward and this part standing back. So I'm just mapping in these dark parts. I'm also going to map in the pupil. It's a quite a weird shape actually and a lot of it is lost behind the highlight. So I'm just going to map that in and I am actually going to fill it in just so I know where it is. And it depends on how much detail you want to go into on this eye, because actually in the catch light, the reflection, there's loads of trees. There's like a telegraph pole where it looks a bit, looks a bit branchless to be a tree. But, um, you know, you can add, you can just keep going back and adding more and more detail, which is really um, lovely. Right. I've mapped in the darkest parts. There is a really dark part along here that I'm going to put in. I'm just going to turn my main light off because I think it does change the colour quite a lot. It's like a warm light, which isn't ideal for drawing. Now I'm going to go in with my Polychromos Ivory and I'm going to go over the whole of the eye except the lightest part, which is that highlight, which is a triangle shape at the top. So I'm using a light hand again. If you're finding that you're going too hard, then hold the pencil further down and it just takes the pressure off. You're not able to add as much pressure. I'm naturally heavy handed and this is something that I always have to catch myself with even now. So I'm using big ovals now to cover a bigger surface area. I can go up to the top of the the side of the pupil, the left side, and I'm just covering the whole of the surface. So what I'm doing is laying down a base layer in a very light colour which means that I can, I've started to 
uh, fill in the tooth of the paper a little bit and it gives me a really nice base to, to then add more pigment to. So I'm going to go over a few times because this eye is, you want it to look glassy, you want it to look smooth, you don't want any graininess showing through like we have on that eye. You know, that's not finished at all. Look at the graininess. It just, it doesn't look real, does it? This one we filled in a few more times. You can still see a little bit, but you can see that it's looking a lot more finished than the other one. So that's what we're looking for. Adding a little bit more, making sure you're covering everything. Apart from that catch light, and actually that comes down the top of the eyelid actually covers it up to the top of the highlight so we can go a little bit darker. Right, I'm now going to start adding some colour and the first colour that I, I can see or the next colour up, just looking at the colour chart, so holding it next to your reference photo and just seeing which colours you think it's probably going to be more likely, instead of a yellow, it's going to be more likely to be an ochre because it's it's got a bit of a brownie tone and if you look around the yellow tones of the eye you can see that green comes next to it and also some siennas some reds and some, and lots of browns so I just think about which colors would work well together if you went in with a really bright yellow it would stand out too much uh, it needs to be a bit more subtle so one of the ochre colors does that make sense right so I'm going to go in with, I don't know if I want the dark Naples ochre, I'm going to go in with the light yellow ochre and I'm just going to start to add a little bit of colour into the parts that I can see some yellow. Now you're going to see green on top of this, that's fine, but if we start adding some colour in, then we can, because tone is relative, sometimes you need to have the other colours around it to be able to know how dark to go. Um, which colours are going to look best together. So I'm adding this over the top of the ivory in all of the places that I can see yellow and that's all of it really apart from the catch light and I'm not really going to bother with the the shadow under the eyelid because actually we're going to add so many uh, darker colours there it's just going to get lost and it's just a bit of a waste of time really. So again small circles a good way to not get the stop and start lines. It's a good way to cover a surface in a much smoother, more uniform way because we want a smooth look. And hopefully you're going to start to see it building up. I'm going to go over it again because um, I'm using a light hand and therefore I know that I got scope to use quite a few layers on this piece. So you can see it's starting to go a little bit yellow. Um, I want to go in with my dark Naples ochre now and I'm going to build up some of the yellow tones in the brightest parts that you can see. Now don't forget if you um, put some pigment down in a place that you don't that you that you think you've put too much so you've been a little bit too heavy-handed or you've um, you know, slipped a little bit or had a sneeze or whatever, you can always pull it back up again with the kneadable eraser if you go in with a light hand. Um, if you go in too dark and start to really press down, it's just going to be more difficult to lift it back up again. Now I've started with these kind of base colours and it's basically all over. We've got these lighter colours. Now what I want to do is start really looking at my reference photo and seeing where the darkest parts are, start to build those up and start to add them in, and then we can see how yellow or how green we need to go uh, in the rest of the eye, the lighter part of the eye. So I'm going to still use this dark Naples ochre, and there you can see, if you've got the reference photo in front of you, there's a really dark... Um, what shape would it be? It's like an elongated teardrop shape and it goes all the way along the bottom of the iris up into this part a little bit and then this part here is still a little quite light in comparison so I'm going to fill this in and add a few more layers of this dark Naples ochre 
just to start to be able to see a little bit of the different changes of colour and the depth of colour as well. So going all the way up here, small circles again, light hand and going over and over and over the same section. We don't need to go to a darker colour necessarily, we can just add a few more layers of the same one that you're using. Darkening up around the highlight and then making sure that you're thinking about those edges because they need to be darker to make it look 3D. So I want to add a little bit around there. Um, there's a lot more green down here, so I think I'm going to just leave that and start to add it here. And just add some colours in all around the edge so that we're going to make this eye pop a little bit more. Right, I'm going to go in with some green now. My favourite green in the Lumen, in the Polychromo set, is the um, Earth Green Yellowish. I think this is fantastic for everything, really. It's such a lovely natural green, it's not too bluey. I don't know about you, but I find a lot of the greens too blue and they're just unnatural looking really. It's fine if you're doing a really vibrant, lovely, pretty bird or something, um, but in an eye, it just looks false. So I'd always go with a more natural earthy color than I would um, pick the, the really bright greens. Like I wouldn't go in with a phthalo green for example it's just too blue and it would look really unnatural and I think we talked about that a little bit with the eyes didn't we when I, I didn't touch on a human eye but when I drew the skin and the hair I just quickly put in the eye and I I generally if I'm drawing blue eyes I will always use greys I won't use blue because it's it just looks unnatural so I think the earthy tones are definitely the way to go when it comes to animals obviously if you're doing something um kind of a fantasy thing or a bit more abstract or patterns or you know then then you can use the brighter ones and, and get away with it definitely so what i'm doing now is i'm using a combination of a, like a little scribbly motion um, because actually when we talked about the stop start lines we don't want that over the whole look but if you look at the reference photo there's loads of little lines and dashes and flecks and all of that kind of thing and although there is no way that I'm going to draw every single fleck that's in the eye I do want some kind of um, little lines to start appearing and I want them to become a little bit um, random I don't want them to be uniform so if I can do a little dark point here and there then that's great that's just going to add to the texture of the eye so I am pressing a little bit hard in some places and going lighter in others can you see that you can see that that's a bit darker than that I'm actually changing my technique slightly and pressing a bit harder in some places just to get a little bit of texture and a little bit of detail in um, because I, I want these little dark bits to stand out. There's some lines in here. So I'm gonna to start to add these with my little green pencil. I do love this one. Sorry if there's any banging. I think one of them's having a little bit of a patty. Um, so I'm gonna do that again around the edge. You can see there's some lines. So I'm just scribbling a little bit and pressing a bit harder. I'm certainly not following the lines on the reference photo that would drive you bonkers and if you do have that kind of patience then oh my goodness I applaud you um, and I think that's probably why my drawings are never going to be photorealistic because I haven't got the patience all the time <laughs> we want to create an illusion you know that's what this is it's an illusion of depth an illusion of detail um, with the least amount of pencil strokes possible. So still going a little bit harder in some places. There's a line there that I want to keep because that's actually there in the reference photo. This part is lighter and then all under here 
is actually quite dark, but it's not just a strip. It goes a bit darker down. There's a little bit here. So I can use this pencil. It's very versatile color just to start to add some of these lines in. Scribbly, scribbly. This is why eyes are so much fun. Don't be put off by the detail in them. It's, it's quite fun to actually just scribble a little bit. You can see that starting to um, become a little bit more textured. We're going to have to go in quite a lot darker with certain colours. And you can see now that the pupil is certainly not dark enough. Um, but that's okay. There's a dark line here that comes in between the two. And this section is a lot darker. I'm just going to put that back so I'm trying to hold both at the same time. Um, there. Right, okay. I think I'm going to have to go in with a slightly darker green. And I want quite a natural earthy green again. And I'm going to go in with the olive green yellowish, which obviously is kind of on the same earthy tones as this. This is the earth green yellowish and this is the olive green yellowish. Number 175, if that helps. I haven't got a really sharp point here. I tried to sharpen all of them before we got started, so I might have to do a bit of that. And I'm just gonna go over some of the areas that I need darkening up. Are you working with a blunt pencil now? It's kind of blunt. It's not, it's not the sharpest that it's been, but that's okay because I kinda wanna, I kind of want to cover quite a big surface area more quickly. We'll go in with the sharper points towards the end. Sometimes, actually, you go in a little bit too heavy-handed in the first few layers if your pencil is too sharp. I, um, I don't think you need them to be sharp all of the time. So just adding a little bit of this to that, the darkest points, the line there, and actually that attaches to the pupil. And there's a bit there that comes up from the bottom. That all needs to be darkened up um, with a lot more browns and reds and all of that kind of thing. Darkening up this side. And what I do love actually is once you've got some of the colours in, you can then add... Um, a few more layers to the dark sepia and it just suddenly comes alive. There's a little bit of a gap there. It's going to be quite interesting to see how different my two drawings are. The same reference photo drawn a couple of days apart. They are going to be different, definitely. I think what I'm going to do is just tackle the, the highlight now by adding a little bit of this colour in because it's a bit darker now and I just want to make sure that I leave that highlight where it should be. There's a line there and I want to make sure that I'm getting the darkest parts in. We're going to go in with a lot darker pencils, but there you go. It's, it starts to create like a round shape now. We can see where the highlight is. I'm just going to add a few layers of this lovely olive green. Right, now in these greeny parts, I'm going to start going in with a little bit of orange, oranges, and I'm going to use the terracotta, another staple colour. I use this colour all of the time, and we're going to start bringing that in. Um, again, holding the pencil low so you're not going to press too hard. We're going to go in with that scribbly motion, start adding some lines, and then the small circles over the top, um, just to cover the surface area smoothly. So I'm using a combination of different techniques here. I'm going over the darkest parts because we're going to add quite a lot into that. And I'm going to, there's a lot of oranges over here and reds. I'm going to go in with the siennas and um, probably the burnt umber and some definitely some darker greens. If anyone has any questions whilst I'm working, I can kind of see your comments, so um, please feel free to ask. Um, and if you're finding that you're, if you're drawing along with me, if you're finding that yours isn't um, 
working for any reason or you're feeling a bit stuck then please do ask and I'll try and help all right so adding a little bit more detail around here that's more of a green line um, and then adding some oranges down here can you see how now we've added the greens, the yellow, the ochre that we've added is kind of disappeared. It looks actually quite ivory. So it's amazing how tone is relative to what you put around it. Colours can look very, very different once you've added the other colours in. That's really dark around there. I'm going to go back in with some of the yellow because we need to pop, make that pop a little bit. Um, I'm going to use the light yellow ochre that we used before and I'm going to smooth. So I'm going to use this lighter colour to smooth, like we talked about with the, the fur technique, smooth some of those pencil strokes. So you will find as you start building up the colour, you don't have to go back to the initial light colour you just need to go with a colour that's lighter than, than the one that you're using. Does that make sense? So if, you're, if you've got black fur, for example, and you've built up through all of the cold greys, and you've got to the point where you've got to cold grey five, and your fur strokes are looking really liney, you could go in with a cold grey three just to blend. It's not going to take away all of that pigment because it's the same kind of tone of pencil but it is going to soften the first strokes a little bit so I'm adding a lot more of that yellow in and softening those pencil strokes at the same time so it's starting to build up through the colors through the layers so can you see that's looking, I'm lost now, what colour came after the green? Um, back to the light yellow ochre, which is uh, one of the, the lightest yellow that we put down. I think it was the second colour we used. And then I've got the, which actually looks, that's light yellow ochre and that's dark Naples ochre. So they are quite different. Um, and then I'm going to use some of this dark Naples ochre over the top as well so we've already used these colors in the base layers so I'm just going back again and adding a little bit more and smoothing the pencils as well okay that's starting to smooth it a little bit I'm gonna now add um, oh my goodness I don't think I've brought my one of my, oh yes I have, my, one of my favourite pencils. I'm going to go in with the Caput Mortem. Was there a brownie colour? There was an orange, there was a terracotta. But what I'm doing is I'm putting my pencils to the side so I know exactly which ones I've used because yesterday it was a little bit of an estimate as to which colours I might use. Um, and then I can tell you exactly which ones I did use if you want to draw along later. I can add that into the comments. So I'm going to go in with my Caput Mortem. Um, the, the dark brown around the edge, which looks a bit black, was the dark sepia. I always start with that one. Um, and all I've used in the greens is the earth green yellowish and the olive green yellowish. Now the Caput Mortem. There's quite a lot of red around here. So again, those small circles and then the little lines that come out. So just adding a little bit more detail as we go. There's quite a harsh line here that I just want to get in. And that's going to add to the illusion of it being round. So all of these little things, not all of them, obviously you don't have to get every single detail in, but some of them, it, just that tweak is going to make it pop a little bit more. And sometimes just a little mark can make such a difference. 
but as you as you use the pencils more and more you'll get to know which points you can leave in and which ones you can miss out from the reference photo if that makes sense so i'm just darkening up with the caput mortem all of those dark green areas and i'm using a combination of small circles and lines just to darken that bit there's a dark that dark line as well And this section up here is really quite dark, so I'm going to add some of that red in because there is a kind of a blend line between the really dark colours up here and the, the reds and the oranges. I'm going to darken up this section so you can see how adding these two dark sections around the edge is going to make the middle look like it's popping out. It's going to make it look round overall. There is a line here that I'm going to just put in so you need more of a steady hand here and there is actually like a little lumpy bit that I'm going to add in it's not it's definitely not a straight line and we can go in and add definition with the dark sepia so that just outlines it a little bit this section here is quite green I'm going to leave that but over here and on the edge here it's quite red so I, I'm going to have to use a combination of different colours. Can you see now we've added the red? It tends to have knocked the orange down. So I'm going to go back in with the terracotta and just add a little bit more. It just needs a bit more of an orange colour. And it definitely needs a little bit more down here. Um, and that needs to be blended a little bit as well. There's too much of a gap of the yellow. This is a ginger cat, so you've used warmer oranges and browns. My cat is grey, so would find more greys, i.e. does fur colour reflect in the eyes. Um, I think you tend to find with animals that... Um, Although you can have the same breed that looks um, different because they're yours and they've got their own personality, generally you'll find that um, certain coloured cats have certain colour eyes. This is a bit the same with um, like brown labs. They've always got that kind of liver coloured nose. Um, and black labs, you'll tend to find that you have a lot of bluey tones. So... Um, I think that's probably true. I think nature's got a great way of <laughs> making everything fit lovely, nicely together. So, yeah, if they've got... Um, what colour is your... I mean, sometimes you will have actually a reflection completely into the eye from the, from the upper eyelid. So you're definitely going to find that. You might find that you've got a grey cat with gorgeous blue eyes. Um, in which case you can use an awful lot of greys in the blue eyes as well. Um, and then just touches of blue to really make it pop. Right, so that's looking quite orangey now. I want to go back in with some greens and definitely some darker greens. Um, I, want, I want kind of like a... Um, an, there's some quite vivid greens, like army greens. Um, I'm going to go in with the chrome oxide green, two, seven, I think that's eight. It's like a six as well. I'm going to go in with this darker green and I'm going to add some texture into the greeny parts of the eye. So again, scribbles. There are some lines that come across and there's some lines that blend from the orange to the green. They start orange and then they change as they go into the eye. And there's some quite dark lines from here. And, and they're quite squiggly, they're certainly not straight. Darken up this section. And there's some darker parts that go into the uh, pupil. So just getting those lines in. We're starting now to add a little bit more detail. So some of you might find that having a sharper pencil is just easier here. 
and then going in with a blunt one because it, if you've got a blunt one at this point mine's mm, kind of half and half if you've got a relatively blunt pencil you might find that the graininess shows through a little bit more so darkening up to this point darkening up all around here this definitely needs to go darker and it needs to connect to that orangey part it's quite a dark part there and then what I'm going to do is use all of the greens that I've already used and go back over the top just to add a few more layers now although this does take time and you might think oh my goodness I don't have the patience for that it's so relaxing and so therapeutic um, there are some times when you want to do a project and it takes an hour and it's done but actually I, I do like the the way that it makes you slow down and all I can think about now is what colour I need to use next really so now I'm going to go back over the top with um, my earth green yellow yellowish and I'm going to blend some of this in because the overall look on this side I would say if you squint your eyes is green um, different shades of green this is going to tone down my pencil strokes so they're not going to look so harsh it's going to blend some of the colors together I'm still using a very very light hand and it's just going to smooth and it's going to bring everything together And then I can go back over the top and add some of the darker colours. You are going to lose some of the pigment and some of the detail. But that's OK because you want it to be an illusion. You want it to look like um, you've spent hours and hours and hours and hours. Right, so at this stage, I would say that we need to hy um, hype up the the darkest parts because they're looking really washed out now and you just see how this is going to make it really pop out and start to come together so I'm going to add the pupil back in and I've got quite a sharp pencil with this and now I've mapped it in I know that I can go a lot harder because actually I'm not going to be adding many more layers to this I'm going to add a little touch of blue uh, at the top and then that's a little bit of black to finish but then that's probably it so coming around the edge got a dark part there sometimes it blends in so I'm pressing a lot harder now I'm trying to get rid of the tooth of the paper the graininess and it's starting to pop out now it's starting to look like it's all starting to fit together does that make sense I'm also going to do this on the edge and you're going to see how this is going to bring it all together so I know I can go a lot darker now now I've mapped everything in and it's going to make the eye look a lot lighter I can really go in dark around here and I can blend the edges a little bit you see how that really makes it look like it's starting to come together for a while you think oh god it's not doing anything it's not looking right but get all those colors in first once you've mapped them in and then you know how dark you need to go with the rest of it i'm going to add probably a little bit black over the top so i'm not burnishing i'm not kind of flattening the tooth of the paper but i'm certainly pressing quite a lot harder with this dark sepia color i'm going to do that on the edge as well looking at the reference photo and then I know how dark to go to the edge so I'll need a lot more um, see, uh, siennas just to blend this edge in I'm not going to worry about those hairs for now that overlap the dark we could you do that at the end with your slice tool or your craft knife or even your your white colors that we talked about if you give it a little <laughs> lick, um, you might find that it will show over the top. I'm just going to add those wiggly lines in. 
um, and there's also a straight line as well that's important just blow away any of the pencil that falls out and then actually this top part is really dark so we're going to start adding some detail into the highlight now you can see some trees it's certainly not um, just a white blob there's some really dark colors in and this dark sepia is really great for that you can add some of the detail in as well you can glaze over the top of this section to add shadow in and blend the edge a little bit and then we're going to come down into the top of that highlight using this dark sepia and you're going to see how that's going to bring out the rest of the colors it's really quite dark all along the top and it does come down into here there's quite a defined line here and that can come down as well but you need to get all of the other colors in to know how dark you can go if you start going really dark too soon you might find that um, well you certainly can find that you can't lift it up as easily but you you might find that you've just gone too dark so it's all about balance and weighing it up and and seeing how dark you can go but only when you've added the other bits in does that make sense so adding some of the detail now and I can go with a, a much firmer pressure around the top which color is this this is the dark sepia definitely one to have in your collection I use this one probably more than any of the others it's just so good for everything it's so good for glazing it's good for outlining you can lift off you lift it off a lot more easily than you can the black um, just gonna have to cover it up a little bit with my hand whilst I go around this part try and come above I'm kind of drawing over the top of the phone, which is a bit weird. So um, I'm trying to get my angles right. And using those small circles again to kind of get that graininess away. You're pressing a little bit harder, but you can still see some of the graininess. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this pencil to glaze over the top to darken up this side because it needs to be a lot darker than it is. Can you see how that is looking like it's starting to soften? It's starting to look um, spherical. It's starting to look like an eye now. Adding these lines in. What I'm doing now is squinting at my reference photo to see how dark the values are. So the lights and the darks, how dark you need to go, how light you need to go. If you squint, you can really see where it needs to be darker. And that is all around this section. It's not dark enough at all. So that needs to be darker. And we can add some scribbly detail in. That needs some lines. Go darker down here. And there are some scribbly lines in here. I'm going to go back in. I'm just trying to stand back a little bit from the drawing. I'm going to go back in with a little bit more of a brighter green. And I'm going to use the permanent green olive. And I'm going to just add a little bit more green to this side. Now it all depends on what you want your drawing to look like. This is your work and you certainly don't have to follow the reference photo 100%. You can do whatever you want. So um, if you want to make it more green, if you want to make it a little bit more yellow, then you can have, have a play. Um, I'm going to go in with a little bit more yellow. I'm actually going to add some cadmium yellow, um, a brighter yellow. 
So I'm going to put that in some of the gaps, not all of them. Now we're just having to think a little bit more about where, which colours we're adding where. We don't want to just put it all over the top uh, because you're going to knock out some of the colours and the detail that you've already used. So I'm just adding this to certain areas just to bring out a bit more of a yellow. You can see how that kind of makes it stand out a little bit. And I want to add a little bit more ready tone. So I'm going to go in with my Burnt Sienna and add that to here. It actually looks quite a lot darker on screen than it does in real life, which is weird. Through the camera, it doesn't pick it up in the same way. I want to add a little bit more red to this part. Like a ready brown, this one. It's a really lovely colour. And I definitely want this side of the eye to look lighter than this side of the eye because of the shadows and the way that the uh, light is catching. And if you don't get the balance right on the, the darks and the lights of your eyes, um, then both eyes are going to look kind of flat. This cat has got his head slightly tilted and you want to make sure that this eye is a lot lighter than this eye. And that's that's really going to affect your overall drawing in the end. I'm going to go over some of the greens with this red. Add a little bit of red to that side. Add a little bit of red to this, just to balance everything out. I tend to find if you use a colour in one section of the animal, if you try to incorporate that colour into the rest of your drawing, it really brings it all together. So just going over into the dark sepia with a little bit of my red. I'm just going to glaze that over a little bit. I'm just going to add a little bit of detail to the, the catch light. And I've actually got a sky blue. There is some sky reflected. There's some blue down here. So I'm going to, instead of going straight in with the pupil, just completely dark, I'm going to just add some blue to the top. It just makes it a little bit more interesting. And some blue of the sky, not going over the whole thing because there's some clouds showing too. And I'm going to go in with my dark sepia and darken up that bit of blue. I want a bit of a brighter blue. I'm going to go in with my phthalo blue and add some of that. Add a little touch here and there. And you'll find that it will just make the highlight pop a little bit more. Gonna blow. I'm going to add that tree and I'm going to add some detail to this side. As you'll find that the it's not just um, one thing in the reflection. Sometimes you can see people. <laughs> um, I actually saw an, a drawing that somebody had done. It was beautiful. It was a cat's eye, huge. And reflected in the cat's eye was another cat and it just looked amazing it was really beautiful I'm gonna add a little bit of that um, phthalo blue to the pupil just to the edge of it here all of these little touches are going to make a massive difference to the overall look and actually I'm going to go in with my black so the last color that you use and I'm going to darken up just some of the edges of this eye because the black at the end of the day sometimes all you need is black so I'm using quite a heavy hand again um, and it's only in certain places it's not over the whole thing it's just the absolute darkest parts of the eye so all around the edge a little bit into this shadow up here because the top of the eye is going to be a lot darker because it's under that eyelid a little bit here I want to darken up the top of that highlight using small circles again And then I'm going to add a little bit of the Caput Mortem 
to this bottom line here just to soften it a little bit and add a little bit of red um, I just want to show you with the kneadable eraser how great it can work on um, certain parts of it so you can see I've had quite a lot of pigment over the whole thing now there are certain areas that I want to lift up a little bit so some of it is sorry which color was this is that the, the dark sepia one or was that another one um, so some of this I want to just lift up a little bit I'm just going to add black to the pupil while I think about it just the bottom part because I really want that to pop out A little bit up the side and a little bit in the middle you can see how that really makes it pop I want to lift up some of the pigment but I don't want to lift it up from everywhere so if you use your kneadable eraser you can just dab and you can see that you can just lift up little tiny flecks of pig pigment and it makes such a difference to the the detail just tiny little bits, bits here and there we're going to really add and what you're doing is you're adding detail by taking pencil away Does that makes sense just a little bit here and there that's too much but look how it takes it up I'm gonna add a little bit of green over the top of that where's my green look how much it lifts it so you can blend away some of that as well I just lifted a little bit too much so doesn't that add to the detail we'll just go in now, because, again, the overall look is quite smooth, I want it to look a little bit smoother than mine is at the moment. And I'm going to go in with, um, if you haven't got Illuminance, you can go in with the Ivory. I'm going to use a combination of the Ochre and the Ivory just to smooth some of this away. Because I want it to look smooth overall. The ivory works as well, so I use that just to soften some of the lines um, and just to lighten up certain areas as well. How's that looking? So keep standing back from your work and just seeing how that kind of looks. I think that section there needs to be a little bit darker um, and possibly around this top part needs to be a little bit darker. You can glaze over with your dark sepia we're done with it um, just gently over the top just to darken everything and around here so it doesn't get rid of detail but it just adds a little bit of pigment in and around the edge right I think we could keep going on that forever so I think what we need to do is get started with the fur and then we can see where we go. So with every eye, there's actually a waterline underneath and it's important to get that in because otherwise the anatomy won't be right. So we need to add that in. I'm gonna use a cold gray two and just go in at the bottom and just make sure that I've got that gap between the edge of the eye and the fur. Otherwise it's gonna look a little bit strange gets a little bit darker and, and wider up in this section. I'm just going in with a fairly light hand and just mapping it in. I want to go in with a slightly darker colour. I'm going to go in with a warm grey four and I'm just going to map in where that kind of tear duct is. There's a bump there so I just want to get that in. It's darker in this section and then the edge of it is a lot darker. I'm not using one line, I'm using scribbly, so it's kind of a broken line, otherwise it won't look very realistic. And I'm gonna add a little bit of my Caput Mortem to the edge, just so it kind of blends and pinks it up a bit. The other color I love and I use all of the time is my cinnamon color. And I'm gonna add a little bit of that to the edge as well, just so that we can start to uh, bring those colours together. There's a little bit of it there. Um, there's quite a lot of pink around this area. That's your kind of tear duct. There's some pink that goes up into there. And then I'm just going to add my cold grey over the top to darken it up. 
I'm just trying to think about which section is going to be easiest to demonstrate because obviously we're not going to finish this today. This is a few hours work. Um, but I want to show you the techniques that you can use over and over again, and then maybe you could finish your drawings, possibly over the weekend or um, whenever you can. I think I might start with this bit, and I'm going to go in with my ivory again, so my base colour. And I'm just going to be careful because you put quite a lot of black in. You might find that it will blend and smudge a little bit. So. I don't mind a little bit of that because we need dark parts around the edge, but just be careful that you don't make it too muddy. So I'm using big circles now and covering quite a lot of surface area quite quickly. And I'm just being mindful not to smudge too much of that black upwards. Sometimes it's a great thing. You can add it um, to a section and it works really, really well just to to blend some of the pigment from the other parts in but in this case I don't want my white fur to look muddy with my black and my dark sepia so using a light hand big circles covering a big surface area and also you've got a really lovely base and then it smooths some of that away I'm going to go in with my terracotta color and I'm just going to start to bring in a little bit of fur technique. So what I'm doing is using a back and forth kind of flicking motion. My pencil touches the paper and then as I lift off, it gets softer. Does that make like, like when you do a tick and you start really hard on the line down and quite hard here. And then as you lift off, um, it gets a little bit lighter. So I'm, I'm using that technique here. So I go in a bit harder and then I'm lifting off. So I'm flicking the pencil up. And what this does is it's, it kind of gives that illusion of the fur because it's obviously going to be wider at the base than it is at the tip of the, the fur, the piece of hair. Um, and also I can map in the direction of the fur and follow the line of the eye. Does that make sense? I'm going to go around the bottom and do the same. So it's kind of like clockwork, isn't it? it? It goes around the eye and it doesn't come straight down. It curves around the eye. And the closest part to the eye is really, really orange. And then it gets lighter as it goes out. I'm going to add a little bit of the burnt sienna around the edge because it's definitely darker there and it's quite ready. So adding a little bit just where the black meets the orange because I want to darken up the base of the colours a little bit more. And then I'm going to use some of that pencil just to shade down here and then add some of it in the corner. Again down here where it meets the waterline is a lot darker. Um, what colour shall I use now? I think I'm going to go in with the brown ochre. I'm just going to have a sip of water. other colours would I suggest? We can go in with our ivory, we can go in with our um, light yellow and our Naples ochre. I'm going to go in with our brown ochre and just start to deepen this fur. So again using that technique, don't hold it too close to the end again and just darkening this. gets longer so thinking about the length of your pencil stroke too um, although you see in the reference photo that the fur around the eye is quite long uh, the fur towards the end is actually really light so if you used your pencil for the length of the fur then it would start to look really shaggy and we don't want that we want um, we want it to look the right length so don't go too too um, 
long on your pencil strokes. It's actually quite important with the length as well as the direction. Um, that's really important. So brown ochre, just a very, very light hand. I'm just going to map in where this pattern goes in the fur. So I'm using relatively long pencil strokes, but I'm using a very, very light hand. And I'm just starting to... I'm just going to fall off the end. Starting to map in that little bit up there so that um, I don't go into this bit with too heavy a hand and darken up where it doesn't need to be dark. Um, even that section there is quite dark. There's a light part around here, so I'm just going to map that in because I don't want to add too much pencil around here. This whole section here is fairly light and then it goes down into the tear duct and actually it's really quite dark around here. Just be careful of where the fur changes direction around the nose because you'll find that actually it goes horizontal and then down again. Can you see? That's quite a tricky section, this part. We don't want to have the fur looking like it's just going off in weird directions. So um, just be mindful, just follow the direction of the fur, adding a little bit of cold grey because I don't want to cover over that tear duct area with orange. And I want to make sure that this part is as dark as it needs to be, otherwise that won't look right. There needs to be shadows in the right place. Um, and with colour pencil, I always find that it's probably best to, to leave certain areas that are lighter um, instead of trying to lift it back up again at the end because it's always a bit of a struggle you can do it to a point but don't rely on that because um, it might leave a little bit of a stain or it might not be as light as you want it to be at the end especially with kind of white fur you'll tend to find it will be a bit yellowy it just won't look as as good so the further up away from the eye I'm going, the longer the pencil strokes are, are being because the fur is getting a little bit longer. It's not really long, but it is it is definitely longer. Has anyone got any questions as I kind of carry on? Um, is anyone drawing along with me? Another thing I would say is where the fur is light, such as here, it's not just light, so don't leave it blank. Add a few little flecks of your darker colours in as well, and it will bring the whole thing together. Otherwise, it will stand out and it will just look too light. You're drawing along with me, are you, Diana? <laughs> How are you getting on? How's it going? Still here? Oh, good, Caroline, that's nice to know. Drawing along, Nicola. How lovely. Um, if you feel brave, you could post them in the group later on. Um, they're a lovely bunch. Everyone's so supportive, aren't they? So it's all about giving people confidence. Um, I've been listening, taking notes, but drawing my Robin. Oh, is that confusing? Good for you. Your lovely robbing, it's coming along beautifully. Still, what's that? I'm drawing along all the wrong colours and paper, <laughs> but going well. Good for you, Lucy. Fantastic. I've got a bit behind, but I'm trying to keep on going. I'm drawing along, but we'll do it again. Well, hopefully, look, you can learn from the... It's funny, I, I'm really going to... It's going to be interesting to see how different mine are. Um, yeah, look how much lighter that eye is. Um, it's not finished, but I've gone a lot darker. And I think a lot of that is because I've done it before. You know, there's muscle memory and, it, uh, you know... Some people are going to prefer the lighter one and some people are going to prefer the darker one. But um, I will draw later so I can stop and catch up. Uh, laughing at Lucy, that's me. You chuckle. Such a joy. Oh, that's really lovely. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Drawing along, not the same colours, but OK. Yeah, definitely. I am behind as well. I'm still working on the eye. Yeah, I'm, I'm going quite fast. Um, just because I'm aware we've been going. <laughs> 
uh, an hour and 20 minutes already and uh, I can't believe I've talked so much. I'm actually quite quiet normally. <laughs> when it comes to art, I can talk for days. Uh, art and chocolate and history. I love history too. Um, and gardening actually, there's quite a lot of, oh gosh, my, my power's running out on my phone. I'm gonna have to plug you in. You are gonna be on a bit of a slant, unfortunately, but hopefully it will work. My computer's just gone funny. Hang on, I'm gonna get some blue tack and blue tack you to my stand. Sorry about that. How's that? Who needs modern fandangled stuff when you've got blue tack? Trying to keep up. What accent do I have? Bristolian. <laughs> West Country, born and bred. A lot of people confuse it with um, farmer language, but it's not very farmy around here. I think they're confusing that with Somerset. Somerset. Um, but I have lived all over Bristol. I've lived in probably about 10 or 11 different places in Bristol. So it's probably a little bit mixed, mixed up. What pencil was I using? I've put it down and I don't know which one it was. Is it the brown ochre? Let's carry on with this one. Right, so there's a little bit of yellow there. This looks a little bit too close to this now. So now I'm gonna go start going in with a little bit of orange. I'm just gonna watch, just going to watch now. <laughs> I hope I'm not putting you off. I hope um, you're not feeling intimidated. This is um, years of practice. Just grabbing them as I go. That's what I normally do. Actually, it's quite difficult to to, to try and when somebody asked which colours they need, I couldn't remember which ones I'd used. I'd just, just grab them and see. I find a colour and I like the look of it and, and I'll go for it. And sometimes I'll put it down and think, oh, well, that was a bit of a mistake. But you can all, always um, go over the top usually, especially, and that's why I would constantly say, work in layers, light hand, and then um, you can fiddle about with it later. So using the terracotta now, this lovely colour, and just following the direction of the fur, building up through the layers. Uh, and when I said about uh, adding the lighter colour, you don't always have to. It's, it, oh, my phone's going on the slide. <laughs> Um, you don't always have to. It's only if you want to soften your fur, blend the colours and get rid of graininess. You don't always have to go back in between every layer and every colour and add a lighter colour. Um, there are no rules with that, definitely not. See, my pencil's quite sharp now. Sorry I keep moving you. Am I making you feel travel sick? My phone keeps trying to jump off the table. Um, I'm going to go in now with a few more browns. And I'm going to try and stick to the polys as much as I can because I think it just gets a bit confusing. Uh, some of the colours I use all of the time are the, uh, the browns. The Bista, I'm sticking you down again. The Bista, the Nugget. The Walnut Brown, the Van Dyke Brown, and what else is there? All of the ochres. So if you're just going to buy a few pencils, buy the greys and the browns, and then you can build up. I don't want this to... See how that's looking like a line? Um, I don't want it to look like a line, so I'm going to go and do some random pieces because it's just not going to look real if it's too straight a line. It's going to look like he's got a weird frown on his face. Um, if I wanted to draw a straight line, I wouldn't be able to. Isn't that just the way it goes? 
Right, I'm going to darken up some of this with my lovely dark sepia. This goes with absolutely everything. And I just want to darken up some of the darkest parts in this shadow, just so it stands out from the rest of it. So adding a little bit of dark in here, and I want to darken up around the eye. I'm going to go in with some more reds. Because it's definitely more in shadow than that. Right, I'm going to go in with some yellows. I'm going to go in with my dark naples, na naples, naples ochre and add some of the yellows. And what's that's going to do, if you think about the colour wheel that we used, you've got primary colour red and you've got primary colour yellow. Sorry, you're on a slant. Um, so if you've got an orange, which is obviously a mixture of them both, if you add a little bit more yellow to it, then you're going to go towards the yellow, but you're also going to have that lovely uh, lighter orange. If you add white, it's just going to knock it all out. So if you want more of a yellowy orange, then just add a little bit of yellow to your orange that's already there. Does that make sense? Oh my God, only just found my dough. <laughs> well, give it a go. See what you think. I love it. It's my favourite pencil. If I had to pick one. I think it would be that one. Um, does depend on what you're drawing a little bit. Um, but I, I think I, I don't think there's been a drawing ever that I haven't used dark sepia. Just adding a little bit of this yellow to this part. And then this part, so this is kind of orangey. This part, I'm just going to go over the top of the brown a little bit to soften it the dark sepia colour and I want to add a little bit more of a orangey tone here just to the right hand side because it gets a bit softer towards the left so that's orange here and that's throughout the whole of the cat so you've got some lighter parts here where I just go in with the ivory um, some darker colors like the um, Bista and the nugget but I my overall look would be ivory in fact I'm just going to go over the top of it a little bit and blend these colors in but not over the whole thing because I've used the terracotta in so many layers that it's actually smoothed it and I do want some texture there I don't want it to look um, too soft so you've all over the cat you've got these orange stripes which are a combination of ivory uh, the oak the what is that? the ochres the brown ochres the yellow ochres the terracotta a little bit of dark sepia and then you've got these darker parts which are a lot more brown so I'm going to go in with my raw umber and add some around here because we want a lot more depth in this section using longer strokes towards the top and shorter towards the nose again some of these lines kind of go into the whiter part this part needs darkening up what color is that orange yes terracotta there are some lovely ones in the luminance but i'm trying not to use them because i think i might confuse everybody the cadmium orange as well is great and i'm going to add a little bit of that into it to brighten everything up but I just want to get these shadows in and show how the shadows um, are similar colours, just with a little bit more depth to them. So I want to blend those two in together and make sure that these shadows are dark enough around the edge of the eye. There is quite a lot of red in here, so I'm going to go in with my Burnt Sienna. Add some red in here and in here and all the way up the side just being careful not to have too much of a straight line and just being mindful that don't add it all over the the air you know, I can I can get carried away very easily and I think oh I love this color and then I end up just going a little bit too heavy-handed all over that area but actually 
less is more definitely if you just add it to certain places it makes the other ones pop and stand out a little bit more so using these little tiny pencil strokes to get that color down and then i'm going to go in with my bister again and just blend that in a little bit to the to the white because it's actually there's a nice transition between the lightest part and the darkest parts when i do acrylic painting i end up with about five brushes yes definitely me too um i have eight pens yes i always hold my pencils in my hand sometimes in my mouth <laughs> um same with acrylic brushes definitely um and watercolor you just end up holding them all uh, probably not good for your hands really is it because you're probably gripping a little bit and having that tension um, give yourself shoulder ache right I'm going to go in with my nugget or nougat and add a little bit to the shadow the darkest part and there's a lot of darkness down here I'm just going to color in that little bit and I'm going to do the edges of that as well. That's definitely not as light as I've done it. So just adding some darkness. Looking at the direction of the fur. It changes here. And then following up. And using some of the darker colours over the top of the lighter, like I said before, just to... Oh, somebody's fallen over. Just to bring it all together. Um, that needs to be darker even more. Uh, do you prefer watercolour pencils or paint straight away? Um, I don't know. I think, I think when I'm in watercolour or paint mode, I kind of like to paint. Um, but actually, and Nicola's in my membership, so um, I'm going to be doing in this month's, next month's content, I'm going to be doing a combination of um, watercolour background, so loose watercolours, watercolour on with a little bit of detail, and also I think I might bring in some watercolour pencils on top, and then coloured pencils on top of that. So it's going to be a bit mixed media, but showing how they work brilliantly together Um so that's, yes, I found my reference photo. I think I'm going to be mixing a couple of reference photos together. Um, I I have done work just with watercolour pencils, actually. I, I did a flower and it was really nice. It was a little bit similar to solvent, uh, the way that I did it. So what I did was um, I added my layers down and then I got a brush and went over the top of the colour pencil with the water and kind of, like you do with solvent, blended the colours together. Um, and that worked really well. That was a lot of fun. So maybe I'll do a little sketchbook project in the membership and just show how I did that. I think I, I think it's on my YouTube channel, actually, but it might be a bit of a time-lapsed version. I don't know. I can't remember, I made those videos quite quite a long time ago. So just adding the darkness around here. Um, and I need to add a little bit of shadow. So this, did I say this was the burnt umber? This is another really lovely pencil to have in your kit. And you can see how I added the, the yellow in here, but it's basically gone because tone is relative. So it, it's just lost a little bit. It looks a bit like ivory now so I'm just going to add that back in a little bit to the top as well so excited oh um, I am too actually I, I think it's it's just going to be so much fun it's going to be a real interesting one a really good um, project to do and I love I love painting I just like to have a paintbrush in my mouth colored pencils are definitely my comfort zone but I, I love to paint as well I've got hundreds of acrylic paintings that are not quite finished um, the only problem with acrylics I found uh, for me is that they take up much more room 
um, because you just have to be a bit mindful of, of the paint. I know they dry really quickly, um, but you just, and also you're working on bigger canvases and you can't just put them in a drawer like you can with your coloured pencils pieces. So um, if you're a bit limited with space or if you've got young children around that are likely to, to damage them or touch them, Understand the way you use the pencil stroke to create the illusion of fur, but I think pe think paper is important since I am using um, sketch paper with less tooth, so don't get the same defined strokes. Yes, definitely. The pencil sort of blends after a few layers. Yes, it paper is really important. Um, I'm not sure if I said that in day one. I, can't, I rambled on for so long. I can't remember what I said, but um, you don't have to have the best papers and you certainly don't have to spend lots and lots of money. The the one that I showed that I'm going to be giving away in the competition, the De La Rowney Smooth, is inexpensive and brilliant. I use that for years, but it does. It's If you're using sketch paper, um, you know, the kind of sketch paper that you get in a pad, it, it's not going to be long until you're going to find it frustrating because it's not going to do what you want it to do. That's if you want it to, to blend. Um, it, 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 it won't be long until, until you find it a bit too frustrating and you want to move on to different paper. Mine's looking like he's done three rounds. He's putting... <laughs> What do you mean, Paul? You've got a really dark black eye around him. <laughs> Have to go catch it later. Oh, bye, Sue. Glad you were watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, have a little go later. People are probably finding this a little bit too quick. Um, but you can always watch it back again and and have a little go um, in your own time without the pressure of um, trying to catch up. Can you see how that's darkening up? Mine is looking like an, mine is looking like an <laughs> eagle in the water. Is it? I mean, the shapes that you're creating. I love that. I love looking for things in in clouds and stuff. Got an artistic, creative imagination there, Lorna. I'm going to start again with the videos. Um, I'm just going to go in with some uh, cold grey three, and I'm just going to blend with that now. Haven't had an. Uh, see, this is where I'm going off on a tangent. I haven't even had it any had it added any grey yet. But I can see some grey in this section of fur and I think it needs it for the shadows. So I'm just going in and blending some of those pencil strokes away. I want to go in a little bit closer so you can see. It's quite pencil-y, isn't it? There's lots of pencil strokes, which I, I kind of like. I don't, I don't want to get rid of any of those. I've lost my dark sepia. <laughs> Isn't it weird? You put it down and it, it disappears. It disappears. It's not that you can't see it. I think it actually goes somewhere. Into the land of the lost and found. Um, until you don't want it again and then it will pop up. So I'm going to add a little bit of grey here. Just to blend into there. And I'm going to add a little bit of grey. Glad you're not the only one. Um... Don't be disheartened if you're finding yours frustrating because it's all part of the journey. It, it's, uh, it, you never stop learning. I'm always picking up new techniques and, and finding that a certain colour works brilliantly, um, much better than the other colours I've been using. So don't be disheartened. Um, it's all about learning, practice, going one step at a time. Don't feel like you need to know it all. You wouldn't pick up a guitar and suddenly be able to play. Uh, you'd have to learn it. So it's the same with this. Don't be frustrated. Try and enjoy the process as well. Try and enjoy 
um, how far you are going. Don't compare yourself um, to other people. Compare yourself to yourself. You can't compare your, your beginning to someone else's middle. It just, it just leads to kind of disappointment. And um, we've all done it. We've all been there. But it, it, it doesn't make you feel very good. And, and that's what it's all about. I'm just going to add a little bit down here. I see that we've been going for quite a long time now. And we haven't got that much done. But it's a matter of repeating the same techniques over and over again over the whole of the cat. So I'm going in with um, the brown ochre. You're on the slant again. I'm so sorry. It's my blue tack. Um, but I've got to have you plugged in, otherwise you will switch off. Um, and then I'm going to soften it with a bit of ivory again. See, these base layers are probably the most important, actually. We're talking about detail and we're talking about the kind of different techniques in smoothing the paper. But probably really important to get that paper smoothed pretty quickly. Um, and then you just need to go in with detail. So if you can just add a few layers and, and smooth the tooth of the paper, then, then all you've got to do is add a little bit of detail towards the end. So you can see I'm just doing pencil strokes in the direction of the fur, thinking about the length of the fur. And then if I, so I've gone over the whole of that area with this brown, with this raw umber. And then if I want to add a little bit more depth, I'll just go over the same area a couple more times. And you can see how you'll start to get stripes then, because there are some little stripes in this section of the fur. I'm just going over and over the same section over and over again. And then you get the the um, the pattern. What I would say is that um, I think I've said this before, but if you've got a lighter section in between two dark sections, add a little bit of your darker section just here and there, and that blends the two parts together nicely. So add some in the middle. Don't leave it just cream, otherwise it will look a little bit too stripy. Same with this part here. You need to add a little bit of the darker colour in just to bring it together and then you can go back over and darken up your pattern. Does that make sense? So I'm just going to stand back a little bit. How's that looking? I think um, it's hard to tell in the camera. But actually the way that the camera's on nowadays what they'll do is we'll pick up a lot of detail. This is quite an old iPhone, but some of the newer ones, it will, it's, it, I think it's a good idea to take a photo because it will, it will be glaringly obvious where your mistakes are um, or where things look a little bit off. So always take a photo and look at the photo and just compare it to how it looks in real life. Um, keep practicing, yeah, keep electric. So that's all, it's just practice, yeah, definitely, like with anything. Um, you start to build up muscle memory. You'll start to um, start to become second nature. It will it will all click into place, um, and then you'll find a new technique, and you'll have to learn that one too. I'm going to watch it later on for a newbie. I want to watch and stop. Yes, definitely. Um, have a little go in one area, and then move on to the next. Um, I just want to show you with this colourless pencil blender that you can get from Karen Dash. So it's still a little bit of graininess. I'm not going to go over the whole thing, but this part here, I want it to be a little bit less grainy. So using a fairly light hand, it just smooths it nicely. And you can do that in the highlight as well, not on that pole bit, but just, and it just smooths it really nicely. Um, this section here without adding any color. So this might be a great tool for people you can use it on polys, you can use it on anything. You know, I haven't actually used any luminance on this, but it really smooths it nicely. Can you see that? The camera tends to pick up more grain than there is. And you can do that with the fur as well. You can blend the fur. You do, and then, you know, maybe it might be easier because you're not worrying about what colour to use. I'm going to go in with a little bit of the cadmium orange under here 
And look how that's made it pop a little bit. Just that touch of colour has really just made it pop out. And I just want to show you, when we talked about values, how important it was to get the darks as dark as they need to be and the lights as light as they need to be so this section here is not dark enough that's probably if you squint your eyes it's probably just as dark just a little bit lighter than this part which I've actually added black to so I need to darken this up a lot more and you'll see how that will make this section pop out a little bit so adding the cap of mortem and darkening up all around this section Coming down into here, watching the change of fur direction. And then adding that to there. It's going to make the eye look like it's actually sitting where it's meant to and it's not just floating around. So this is a lot darker. I'm going to go in with my burnt sienna. Darken this bit underneath and all around there. And then I'm going to go in with the burnt umber adding a few more layers so this is how you're building up building up you can't tell to begin with how dark you need to go um, you can't do that until you start adding all of the other colors around the trusty dark sepia it's really dark around there so I'm going to go in with a dark line shadow there so I'm just going to blend that shadow away dark line there and it's really dark in here so look how that's made such a big difference to um, the overall look I'm even going to go in with black in that dark part um, and then because there's quite a harsh line here I'm just going to soften that a little bit with my greys, my warm grey a little bit in here and then I'm going to add a little bit of the terracotta and then this part of the eye is actually quite a lot more orange so then you'd start to blend all of that in and it would all start to make sense then going up, there's quite an orangey part and a reddy part. And then there's, what colour should I go in with? If in doubt with the reds, go in with the burnt sienna. And you can see how just adding that has added a little bit of form and shape to that tear duct. You see how dark that is now? And then the rest of it, this part here, will start to really pop um because if you squint your eyes this part here is the darkest part and then it leads into the eye there's a big shadow here because you need to take into account the nose the bridge of the nose so there's a shadow cast here and then it starts to lighten up as we go up the eye does that make sense i'm gonna watch later what what is it called again which one this um this one um that's the colorless pencil blender um, and it's Karen Dash and it's you actually get two in the luminance range if you buy the set but you can buy them open stock and I know you can buy them in sets of two in the coloured pencil shop it's really fantastic for that so how's that looking we've been going nearly two hours oh my goodness nearly two hours again look how slow coloured pencils are they are known for it um, I'm just going to turn you around and talk to you and not look at that eye. See my light shape. Let's just put you back on the stand a second. Um, how did you find that? Was it okay? Um, have you got any other questions before I go? Let me just turn my light on so you can see me. Um, how did you find it? It's not easy. You know, it's it's really not easy and it's something that is going to take a little bit of practice and a little bit of time, but just enjoy it. Don't worry too much about the process and you will find your own way too. Um, and if you add things to the group, it will be fantastic to see them. It's been really exciting. Um, 
so glad you've enjoyed it just wanted to mention the competition i'm going to be going through all of the entries tomorrow i think um with all the hashtags and entering you into the competition that i'm hoping to draw either sunday night or monday at some point all depends on how long it takes because so many of you have been entering it's been fantastic so yes i'm going to be doing that uh this weekend or monday at the latest um still time to enter i think the cutoff will be sunday night i think that probably will be the best thing um really helpful learned a lot my pleasure absolute pleasure um so the prizes for the competition are a month free in the discovering the artist with a new membership the art of mindset membership and the second prize is a few little goodies that i'm going to be sending uh, the lucky winner's way which is very exciting um don't forget um that the doors are open to my membership right now my art and mind mindset membership if you have enjoyed these draw alongs and that's what this the membership's going to be really about it's a little bit of a, a glimpse into what we're going to be what i'm offering um we've got a vip members group which i'm going to be hoping to do a lot more of these in uh, I want to be able to draw with my members and have that community like let's do this drawing let's what reference would we, you like to do what would you like to learn from and then do lots more live draw alongs we can also do it through zoom Q&A's um, you know I, I just want to be I just want people to feel like they're supported in their journey that they can ask questions and I'm there to help them uh, along the way and that's not only the tutorials that I'm going to be adding into the group but also pieces that you're working on that maybe you would like some help with there's a lot of things that that really do translate between the different mediums a lot of tips that i picked up with my color pencil works that i use with my acrylic and use with my watercolor they tend to work so nicely together and i think sometimes it's a lot about just you know practice and learning and and sharing and inspiring you know I, I just want to inspire you to keep going to feel passionate about your artwork not to get too frustrated and disheartened if it's not looking the way that you want it to right now but encouraging you in the process and bringing that joy back and and finding that that kind of peacefulness and mindfulness in the drawing that gives you that peace of mind learning something new keeping your brain active is so important keeping your brain focused on something positive is really important at the moment especially and having a little project that you can be working on um, that gives you some structure to your day even if it's half an hour in the evening or getting up and working straight away in the morning if that suits you i'm definitely more of a morning person than i am evening i'm done by seven o'clock i'm kind of you know can't really see straight so um it depends on your personality but the, the art and mindset membership is to support you mind body and soul um like i said i'm a hypnotherapist as well and i want to keep people feeling motivated and positive not all the time of course it's okay to feel down it's okay to feel flat some days but you know it's how long you stay there and what you can do to lift yourself back out of it that's important i think um, lots of tutorials so many things in my head so many things planned that I've got in the future obviously I'm limited to time and what I can put into a membership per month but we're going to be building up this fantastic library of content that you can go back to over and over again and try them out and see how far you've come I love to do that do a project six months later do the same one again and see the difference you know see how far you've come I'm trying to read the comments no we stopped and I looked at the distance i can't believe i did that very yay see this is what it's about you know i want people to feel excited about what they're producing not comparing it um to other people's in a bad way feeling inspired by each other and and sometimes I, I would say that's really important if you're doing something and you're struggling and you're finding it frustrated step away from it have a cup of tea do something else and come back and you will be amazed at how great your piece of work looks um sometimes i just think this isn't working and i come back to the next day and i think well actually I, you know I, that bit's okay and i can work on that and it's amazing what you can do with fresh eyes thank you so much it was a lot of fun i'm so glad um 
yeah, so if you did enjoy this, then do consider the Art and Mindset membership. It's only going to be open now until next weekend. So I've only got a week um, of open doors and then I don't know when it's going to be opening again. Um, and you have got the benefit because it's fairly new of being able to input. I'm very open to suggestions about all the things that you would like in the membership and how I can support you and improve and help and um, improve your learning really and, and to kind of fast track you a little bit so that you don't fall into all the pitfalls and the things that are frustrating if i can stop you from doing some of them i know learning you will learn from some of them but i wasted a lot of time and money that it was a bit of a shame so um and also looking through lots of videos and trying to find the answers when you can kind of ask a question and then it's done um thank you so much um now we've stopped i've already read those so really hope you enjoyed it if you are interested in the membership then i put the link in the um title of this video and i'll put it down again if you do want to get on a call with me i'm happy to talk to you or you can send me an email if you have any questions but i've got quite a lot of information on the page that i've set up if you just click on the link there's a video there as well explaining a little bit about it but of course ask questions if you want to so i'm going to leave it there for today we've been talking and rambling for two hours again um, i hope you enjoyed it i hope to see you soon please keep putting your work into the group it's been amazing to see. 